Welcome back. You're watching Z on Z Tech Media. We are back with another Today book. We are going we to are. talk about elastic load balancing, which is used very widely on AWS platforms. Elastic load balancing is no different than all the other load balancers, but with little bit of advanced features and specific to Amazon Cloud Computing. So, as we always say, learning technology step by step. That's our motto and that's why we are making these videos one after another so that you guys can grasp knowledge of technology and utilize it wherever you feel the best. So today we are talking about ELB. ELB stands for Elastic Load Balancing, just specific to Amazon Cloud Computing. So what is the main reason why Amazon use Elastic Load Balancing? We are going to give you the in in insights of Elastic Load Balancing why it is used, when it is used, and how it is used. So we have why, how, and when for you coming up. So as we have discussed in our earlier episode of load balancing, why load balancers are used. Today, we are specifically talking on elastic load balancing. What is the purpose of this elastic load balancer in the cloud computing environment? So as I told you, the first layer is the client, and then there is an internet. And then whatever requests the clients have, according to their applications or websites, the internet passes on that to the elastic load balancer and that's the first place in the uh, data environment the client request enters. And as soon as the load balancer receives the request, it has to process that to the servers or uh, the servers which can do the functionality of sending those requests after processing it back to the clients. So elastic load balancers are used because the servers should not be getting overloaded. So in order to avoid the overloading workload on servers, we use elastic load balancers. And also, it decides according to the algorithm or according to the type of load balancer we are using, it decides how to transfer the load, where to transfer the load. So basically, we are talking about smart technology being deployed here in the load balancers, which decides the workload distribution. And also, uh, if the workload is distributed to those servers efficiently in an organized manner, then yes, we will not have downtowns because the servers will not crash. Now we have discussed the purpose of elastic load balancers. So how these elastic load balancers formulate? What is the design behind the data routing, the workload routing, routing from clients to the servers? So elastic load balancers are different types and they also have different algorithms to work on. Depending upon the necessity, depending upon the business need and requirement, we can deploy different algorithms which best suits the business. Alright, because everything we deploy, the main purpose of deploying the ELB in a cloud computing environment is to cut short all the fault tolerant, you know, uh, to make all the other devices fault tolerant and process the information back to the clients in a very fast manner and efficient manner. So let me give you an example. For example, I drive a Mercedes-Benz and this Mercedes-Benz have different modes to drive. So for example, I can, if I want to save fuel, I can just put it on economy. And if I want a comfortable ride, then I can put it on comfort drive. And then let's say if I want to speed up a little bit, then I will put it on sports. And if I want to maximize my uh, engine, then yes, I will uh, put it on full thrill or throttle, which is the Sports Plus version. Similarly, these uh, elastic load balancers are of two types. Uh, classic el uh, elastic load balancer and application elastic load balancers. We'll talk more about these two uh, in just a few moments from now. However, what I would like to let you know, apart from these two types, we also have algorithms. So these algorithms can actually work like the modes in the car, the way you want to drive. So keep watching guys. So since the advent of elastic load balancing in cloud computing, uh, ELB has emerged, it has grown. Uh, it has grown to an extent, we can say that it is not just limited to applications on cloud computing, but right now we also has NLBs which are network load balancers also manage the network traffic. And depending on what type of traffic coming in, uh, it routes, the load balancer routes to applications and if it is a network traffic to the network load balancers. So, 
whenever we talk about Amazon's cloud computing AWS or cloud computing in general, we specifically talk about ELB. It's a very important factor. It plays a very vital role in cloud computing. Why? Because uh, if you have visited airports, if you have taken flights domestically or international, uh, it doesn't matter because uh, the security checks are common. So ELB is a security check. Instead of security check, it performs health check. What it does is it, it smartly understands what kind of traffic it is, whether it's an application traffic, traffic or network traffic, and it decides how many servers we have. We, uh, certain servers are big, huge, can handle a lot of loads. Certain servers are not that huge. They cannot handle a lot of workloads. So it decides smartly how and where to travel this workload. So let me give you an example of a very fine uh, elastic load balancing. So let's say I launch a website which is uh, ztechmedia.com and since we don't have so many users or clients accessing that website, uh, we will not have huge traffic coming in. So we can deploy a server like T2Micro which is a small kind of infrastructure uh, which will uh, be able to handle traffic at a minimum level and yes, uh, we will not have the server uh, crashing. However, if all of a sudden, one night, like a boom, our website becomes famous and we have huge traffic, if not in millions, like hundreds and thousands of people accessing on a daily basis, and if we still have the same infrastructure like T2 Micro, then yes, our server will crash. So what we need to do in that case is we need to deploy M5 Large, uh, which should be able to handle huge capacity of incoming traffic. Alright, so we'll talk about types of load balancers in ELB. We have classic ELB, which is classic elastic load balancer, and then we have application ELB, which is application elastic load balancer. Let's first discuss about classic ELB. So, when we talk about classic ELB, there are certain things to remember or focus in this particular load balancing. This is a previous version load balancer when, uh, when AWS was starting, it was uh, uh, new in the market. That time, this particular ELB was widely used. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, the companies would not like to use uh, uh, classic ELB, instead they want to use application ELB. Uh, one main reason is because it's not smart enough, it doesn't understand the current workload of the servers and it just do the traditional routing of workloads and also it doesn't do the path based routing and host based routing uh, which is also available in application um, uh, elastic load balancing so uh, these are the disadvantages of using plastic load, ba classic load balancing Now let's discuss a little bit about application elastic load balancing. So this particular load balancing was specifically or specially designed focusing on web applications. So any traffic coming with HTTP hypertext transfer protocol or HTTPS hypertext transfer protocol secure uh, will be uh, put into application load balancing because it can handle that particular traffic very efficiently. And also, uh, this particular load balancer is designed on basis of OSI 7 layer. So it doesn't have all those 7 layers, but there is a layer in OSI model which is an application layer. So this is designed basis on application layer of OSI model. That's the reason it's named after application. Alright, so that's it from today uh, episode. And if you like the video guys, Please like the video, share the video, and subscribe to our channel, Z Tech Media. See you guys next time.